And I suppose this was about high school, high school time. And the other students were really impressed with how well I could draw. They would comment about um, the drawings just look just like a photograph ad. How do you do that? That's amazing. Do you, you know, draw one of those grids and map it out and do it? But I really hadn't learned how to do that yet. I was just drawing everything by eye. I think I was just doing it so much it caught on and I think I was really good at it. And I also had my uh, first introduction to having a paid job as an artist in, when I was in high school. I was, uh, I think I was 16. It was an after school job where I was drawing houses for Century 21. When uh, somebody would, a new homeowner, when they buy a house, Century 21 would give them an original drawing of their house. And so me and my boss, Mike, after school, we draw all these little pencil drawings of these houses. We'd frame them up, put a little plaque on them, and send them off to the new homeowner. And that was really a great experience because it kind of introduced me to you can actually make money being creative. I learned that very young, so saw that opportunity. I thought I was going to start my own company, drawing houses. How great would that be? I could draw pictures all day. Um, and every, every time I drew one of those houses, it was always exciting. Did I just lose that? Can you hear me anymore? Anything? Anything now? All right. Um, so the house drawings. It, it, it was really a wonderful, wonderful experience. And we really got into all the little details of the house and enjoyed, I, I, at least I enjoyed it. every home drawing that, that I ever did. We get into the details of the, the lawn. We try to draw every blade of grass. We get into the details of drawing the trees and all the shutters and as much detail as we could. So I was really into, I was really into detail in my, my art at that time. And I think a, a big changing moment for me came, came in high school. I had a really, a really challenging and good high school art teacher, Merle Clerks. And uh, he, would, he was really tough on us in our critiques. Not, himself, but on the, each student to critique each other and practice critiquing. We would put our drawings or paintings up in the hallway, and um, he'd make all the students, you need to say one thing that you like and one thing that you don't like about, not don't like, but one thing that maybe you would change about each person's work. And so these were challenging critiques. Some people struggled with them. and. He's really trying to get us to think about what we were doing and why we were doing it. And one day, I had my really amazing hockey goalie drawing up on the wall, and everybody was talking about how much they, they liked my hockey goalie drawing, how it looked exactly like a hockey goalie. It looked like a photo. And uh, Mr. Clerks asked me what else I could do. He said, it looks like you can you can render drawings from Sports Illustrated, but what else can you do? And the words, what else could you do, really, I think, kind of hit me at that age that, yeah, what, what else can I do? It was a question that I started to ask myself. And I remember going into class, maybe, I don't know, a few days later, and we had access to art supply closets and whatever we wanted to. And so I made large canvases maybe about the size of these here, and I just started throwing paint on them as much as I could to show my teacher, well, here's what else I can do. I can do something else. And I don't, I don't know if he was really impressed with it or not. He didn't really seem, seem too impressed, but it was the whole idea of asking yourself the question, what else can you do? And that really stuck with me. So that, along with my childhood, experience, looking back to that, the freedom, experiencing, discovery, and play, then asking me that question of um, what else can you do while you're working? 
And then I got into, then in my college years, that's when I came down here to Bethany and started to study the artists a little bit more in depth that you've been hearing about. I, at, up until that time, maybe I was, you just admire the pictures that you'd see. You didn't really know much about the artists. And I remember um, Bill's art history classes were always my favorite here. We always learned a lot, saw, heard the passion in his voice and uh, questioning about what, what were these artists thinking when they were doing this. And I just remember him standing up there smiling, asking those questions of us. So that was really a, a wonderful experience. And even after Bethany, I continued taking a lot of art history courses and, and studying artists on my own, too, quite a bit. And I really found myself um, becoming more and more interested in what, I guess, the surrealist artists were saying. Not necessarily all their work, but I became interested in what other artists were like and their quotes and reading about them. And some of the things that I was reading were, uh, like Man Ray would say, I paint what cannot be photographed, that which comes from the imagination or from dreams or from an unconscious drive. And then uh, Duchamp talked about being interested in ideas not in, not in visual or visual products. And then some of the more contemporary artists like Keith Haring talked about, well, one of his quotes that I really like, uh, he said, I'd like to pretend that I've never seen anything, never read anything, never heard anything, and then make something. And those are some of the ideas that were just really fascinating to me that there's all these other artists out there that are talking about not necessarily being interested in rendering like I had originally been interested in, but they're also, I think, asking that question, what else can you do? So this is all coming together when I was painting my art log or working on my art log and trying to paint every day. From the childhood, the freedom of experimenting, and the playfulness, the teenage years when I discovered the what else can you do. And then in the college years when I was reading a little bit more about other artists and finding out what else was really out there. So after that 200 days of painting, I, I had quite a few paintings. And I took a lot of photos of my work and wanted to do something with them. So. I post them on mnartist.org. I don't know if anybody here is familiar with that site, but it's a great resource where any Minnesota artists can post their art for free. It's a great network for finding out what's going on in Minnesota and the arts. And so I had my work up there for a while. And I got a call one day from this guy named Yuri. And he said he's starting an art gallery in Minneapolis and he was wondering if I might be interested in showing some work. Well, I really wasn't plugged into the Minneapolis art scene, but I was interested in showing work, so I said, yeah. And we talked a little bit on the phone. He talked, you know, asked me what I had been doing and told me a little bit about what he was doing. So I packed up some paintings and brought them down to this gallery he was getting ready to open. Now this isn't it was downtown Minneapolis, it was kind of, well, anyway, downtown Minneapolis, and uh, part of downtown Minneapolis that they're starting to try to redevelop at that time. So it wasn't the best of shape, and he was turning an old funeral home into an art gallery. Oh, well, it's pretty interesting. So I brought my work down, and I, and I go inside, and there's people painting walls and electricians putting in lights, and there's pounding and banging, and there's dust all over the place, and this young guy about my age comes out and says, hey, I'm Yuri, and let's take a look at what you got, and 